What if I could give you a success strategy that's used by most successful people that's so easy to do, you could do it every single day? That's what I'm going to do for you today on Coach's Corner. Welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner, Empowerment for Entrepreneurs. This is episode number 38, Gaining Momentum. Today's podcast is is sponsored by The Marketing Network, themarketingnetwork.tv, profitable marketing training for business owners who want to get results fast. Visit us online at themarketingnetwork.tv. Use offer code COACH at checkout to save 25% on your membership. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner. I'm your host, Robert Imbriali. Happy to be with you again. Uh, seems like it's been forever, but it's only been a few days. It's really only been about four or five days since the last time I had an opportunity to uh, chat with you. I got to say, there's been a lot of activity on the Coach's Corner page. A lot of people have been jumping in and signing up and, and liking the page, and I really appreciate you and your feedback. Also been getting some nice uh, emails from people saying that they enjoy the podcast. And uh, I've included in the uh, link above, you look above, Above, in the description just above here, um, I've included uh, links for you to subscribe to it via iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher or TuneIn Radio. Uh, we're available pretty much everywhere that uh, podcasts are streamed, and I invite you to sign up so that you don't miss an episode. Uh, what we do is we put them up after they're recorded. We do them Facebook Live, and then we clean them up a little bit and then put them up there, and uh, they are literally delivered right to your podcatcher, whatever app you're using. I use iTunes. And, uh, and the podcast app on the iPhone, and they show up there. Literally, I, I published them, and they're there within 10 minutes. They show up, which is really a lot of fun, and uh, it allows you never to miss uh, a podcast episode. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you for signing up. Thank you for being a subscriber. And today, I don't want to waste your time. I want to give you something of value, right? What's the point of doing this if you're not going to get any value? So today, what we're going to talk about is this concept of building momentum. Now, you might not think of it as anything really big, but I got to tell you something. The truth is all success is not an overnight event. Like we know that we've heard that before, right? But I think a lot of people start to kind of mess that up and they go, what do you mean? It feels like an overnight event. Well, it really isn't an overnight event. It takes time. So what you hear is when you see somebody who's like, wow, all of a sudden they became successful. If you really look at the story, they've been doing what they're doing for 10, 15, 20 years before things really started to pop. Hey, you know, it's not their first time out. It's not their first time trying something. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden they come out on the market. The market loves it. They go, this is well thought out. It's well planned. Yeah, you know been doing it for a long time. You know, the book I wrote took me 20 years to write the book, and all of a sudden the book is a bestseller. Not my book, but other people's books, right? So you look at that from that perspective, and you say it's not an overnight game. It does take time for you to become uh, more successful or really to become that successful person. And I'm going to share with you the sort of the, if we think about a building, right? You think of how a building is made. Um, and the success strategy here is that we're going to be talking about the posts that hold the building up, right? We call it in in uh, the publishing industry, we typically call it a wireframe. Uh, in the engineering world, I think they call it a wireframe as well. But it's the it's the the, the beams, the two by fours and and the those kind of things that make the structure possible. You and I look at it and we see the facade, we see the outside. We look at the book, we see the cover, we go, wow, great book. But you don't really realize how much work and how much research and how much time went into creating that. And what I'm going to share with you today is how do you look at that wireframe? How do you build that wireframe up so that when it comes time to you know, really look at your business, you're going to look at it six months from now and it's going to be much better and then where it is today. You're going to look at your career. You're going to look at your knowledge base in the industry that you're playing in. And guess what? It's going to be better. You're going to look at your relationships. They're also going to be better if you follow along with this. Now, this has been a habit for my, of mine for many, 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 many years. And really, uh, it's one of those things I, I was doing it, but not really realizing that it was making all the difference. I never put two and two together until you know my until I got probably, probably into my 30s and I started to realize, wow, this is really interesting. But I jumped ahead pretty quickly in school. I jumped ahead pretty quickly in my career. It was actually the very first. I graduated uh, photography school with a degree in commercial professional photography. And I was the only student in 20 years the school had been in existence up until that point to actually graduate with an open photo studio in downtown Montreal. 
right? And what was that the result of? It wasn't the result of, oh, all of a sudden my parents are rich. They gave me money. They didn't. They didn't have any money, right? I had to do this all on my own. And how I did it was what I'm going to share with you today. It was just a natural habit with me. And uh, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to translate that in, in a way that you can understand and say, that makes sense. It's something I really want to do as well because my career has been stagnant. I look at some people sometimes and I say, how long have you been in the industry? And they say, 40 years. Oh, great, 40 years. That's, that's amazing. Uh, you must be right at the top. You might be, must be the president of a company or industry leader. No, still doing the same job I was doing 40 years ago. So really, you've been doing the business for one year, 40 times over. Really? And that's you don't want to be in that position because you're not going to get paid more. You're not going to become more and more valuable. Right. The number one strategy for people who come to me and they're they're an employee of some uh, company and they say, Rob, I want to become somebody who they pay more to. Great. You know what you need to do? You need to increase your value. You need to become more valuable to the company. How do you do that? What I'm going to share with you today is how you do that. So let's get right into it here. Regular wins, uh, what I talk about when I talk about regular wins, uh, they're small little things that you uh, accomplish on a daily basis. Maybe you get that email done. Maybe you get a telephone call made. Maybe you meet with somebody new. Maybe you sign up for a seminar. But regularly doing this, and this is not just an occasional thing. Like I know some people who will be like, well, last year I signed up for one seminar or I made one phone call in the last two months. That's not going to do it for you, right? It's not going to get you anywhere. Yeah, it'll give you a little boost here and there, but it's not enough. What we're looking at, and the word regular there is really important, right? I said regular small wins create momentum. Now, what do I mean by regular small wins? For me personally, it's daily. It's every single day. And here's how I look at it. I never end any day without taking at least one step toward whatever my goals or my dreams are. I simply never end a day without doing that. And you might say, Rob, that sounds like an awful lot of work. You know what? It doesn't have to be a big step, but it has to be a step. I actually don't, you know, I've gotten to the point in my life now where I can't leave the studio here without feeling of having some sort of feeling of accomplishment. Otherwise, I'm, I'm like, I'm looking for something, right? At the end of the day, I've got to find something. It's such an ingrained habit with me. I've got to find something that... Really, I can walk out and I can feel accomplished. I've done something. I've accomplished something. I've learned something, right? So for me in this area of of streaming video, teaching, online education, which is the area I'm playing in these days, uh, really it's important because this is shifting and changing literally on a daily basis. So if I did not keep up with it, I got to tell you, I would fall behind really quickly. I mean, the software I'm using right now, the cameras I'm using, the lighting that I'm using, all this stuff is changing on a regular basis. Camera I'm using is only a few months old, right? A few months ago, the camera I was using before was the latest and greatest thing. Now it's not anymore. Now it's pretty much obsolete, right? The software I'm using was updated just a month ago, right? Completely, you know, new new features, new things. I've got to keep up on it. So every single day, I'll watch a video. I'll read an article, I'll flip through a magazine, I'll pick up a book, read a book, or I'll make a phone call, or I'll send an email, or have a conversation with somebody, never ending the day without doing at least one step, one thing in that direction. Because if you do, you know, you end up stagnating, literally, and it gets, you can get in the habit of not doing anything. And that's sort of the reverse of what I'd like to see you do. I'd like to see you do something every day that moves the needle forward for you. Small things. Doesn't have to be huge things. You know, some days you're going to have huge breakthroughs. Some days they're just going to be very small. I read five pages in a book today. You know what? That's enough. So long as you keep doing it again and again and again. So long as it doesn't become a thing that you do once and never get back to. Reading five pages a year, not going to help you. Reading five pages a day for a year really is going to propel you forward, right? So that's what we're looking to do. So... Look to learn at least one new thing every single day about your craft, your industry, what you're doing, about your business. Uh, You know, just go out there. Look to learn at least one new thing every single day. Not hard, right? I think you can pull that off. I don't think that's a difficult thing for you to do. I think you can get away with doing that. I don't think it's a challenging thing for you to do. All I'm asking you to do is just do one thing. What is the one thing that you can learn today? What is one thing you can do before you leave your business today or before your head hits the pillow tonight? What is one thing you can do that will help move that needle forward? That's all I'm asking you to do. What is it? Go find it. 
could be, you know, like I said, very simple. Go find an article, go find a video, pop open YouTube, type in a keyword of something that you're interested in and you want to learn more about, you're going to find a lot of videos, a lot of educational videos on there uh, that are very valuable. I'm actually finding that I'm using YouTube a lot more. Are you? I'm certainly really finding a lot of good stuff on there. Uh, it's a really a nice place to be. Okay, next piece I want to talk to you about is this idea of leaders. I talked to you earlier and I said this is the sort of the wireframe, if you will, of what leaders do. They're always growing. Growing, right? Uh, I went two weeks ago to a seminar that was a personal development seminar more than a business seminar. Why did I do that? Because, you know, if you want to grow your business, you got to grow you, right? Some of the biggest work that your most impactful work you're going to do in your business is really working on you and not necessarily working on your business. As funny as that may sound, a lot of people are like, no way, that's not possible. It's not possible. It's exactly true. So leaders in my book are people who have created momentum. In other words, they're doing this every single day. They're learning something. They're doing something. They're moving needle, the needle in their business, in their careers, in their knowledge base. They're moving it forward every single day, and they keep it going pretty much their entire career. I've been doing this now since the 80s, you know, 1980s, long time ago, you know, big hair, kind of 80s, right? I've been doing this every day since then. And yeah, I miss days. You know, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I'm not feeling well or I don't get to it. But it really has become an ingrained habit. And you say, okay, how do you raise, rise yourself up to the top of your uh, industry? How do you become somebody who's invaluable, indispensable in your, in your business, right? Or the company you're working for? That's how you do it. You just keep doing this every single day, keep growing, keep growing, keep growing. I was, when I was working in corporate and I left corporate world in 1995, when I was working in corporate, I was this way. You know, every day I would have something new to talk to the boss about, right? I was director of marketing for the large company and it was like every day I'd have a new idea, I'd have a new strategy, I'd have a new piece of information that I could share with him. And he was having trouble keeping up with me at times. One of the challenges of being an entrepreneurial mind working in a corporate situation is, uh, you know, you, you kind of outperform sometimes the, the owner of the company. And I was doing that from time to time uh, just because I was this, this way. I was kind of built this way from the ground up. It's, I'm going to learn something every single day. I'm going to you know, bring new, new, uh, new knowledge, new information to the work that I'm doing and the, and the position that I held so that we could propel the company and move the company forward just a little bit more. Next one is learning versus doing. Now, I have found, uh, sort of intuitively, just sort of feeling through what I'm doing, that there's a time to learn, and sometimes it goes in, in cycles for me where I'll be learning for, you know, right now I'm in a learning phase, so I'm reading some stuff, I'm, you know, getting some new strategies on Facebook advertising, all the, like I need another one, I've got so many already, but I'm looking, I'm learning, and I'll read through a book, I'll put on my Kindle or whatever, and, you know, do that for a couple of weeks, and then I'll feel like, well, I'm out of the learning phase now. Now I'd like to get into the doing phase, right, because the knowledge is great, it's valuable, it's potential energy, but you got to, at some point, take that potential and make it kinetic. In other words, put it into action, and that means you've got to do. So you've got to kind of balance these things, and I don't have any, any surefire formula for you, but I just feel into it, and I say, okay, today I'm, I feel like I'm in a learning mode. I'm going to learn something new, you know, learn a new strategy, learn what somebody else is doing. I'm going to learn, and you know what? Tomorrow I might come in and say, you know, that strategy is pretty cool. I'm going to try it. I'm going to go out, and I'm going to today turn that into kinetic energy. I'm actually going to do something with it so that I can put it into action and reap, the, obviously, the benefits and the results of doing that. So there's this balance that you have to get into. And so you can't do all learning. I have people that I know who are PhDs, sometimes double and triple PhD people, can't make any money. Why? Because they know so much, they do nothing. And they're completely out of balance. I know people who work really, really, really hard all day, all day, every day. They work hard. They come home at night. Best they can do is make it to the couch. That's it. And they're wiped out. And again, they don't grow. They're doing that day in, day out, day in, day out. They don't grow. Their career is the same. You have to see them 10 years later. Have, have things changed? No. Have you gotten a promotion? No. Are you still working for the same company? Yes. Why? Because they're not learning anything. So on the learning side, you've got to make sure you're learning and you've got to balance that with doing. And you see the most successful people will do this. They'll alternate between the two. Some will do both the same day. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I'll, I'll read something online or watch a webcast or something and say, hey, that was a great idea. And 
go immediately do it. Depends on what's going on. Depends how I feel. But I recognize that that balance is important. So the learning versus doing balance, that's what I call it. And it's real important for you to get, uh, you know, a feel for that for yourself to see how it fits. Uh, you might decide, okay, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is learning days. And Tuesday, Thursday, you know, those are the days that I'm actually going to do the doing. I'm not that structured. If that works for you, that's great. I am simply just not that structured. I can't do that uh, particularly in that way. But you got to figure out what works for you. Okay, so the success habit, you can write this one down, is alternate between learning and doing. This is the one that makes the biggest difference for all of us. And uh, the more you do this, the better job you do at this, the more success you're going to see yourself uh, experiencing. Now, you might think, well, I'm a person who really prefers a lot of learning. And, and what you may do is you may need to build a team of people around you who are doers, right? That's what they really the strategy of the business owner. The business owner is not the entrepreneur who's in it and doing it. I kind of fall into the, the entrepreneurial because I love I love the doing so much. I love learning, but I also love the doing. So, you know, I'm, I'm like the entrepreneurial mindset. But you could be the business owner and just learn. And as long as that learning, that knowledge is being put into action, doesn't have to be by you. I actually met somebody last week who does this, who's really learning, 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 and researching, learning, researching all the time because that's what they love. And then they've just built a team around them of doers. And they come in every Monday and they say, here are the things I'd like you to uh, put into action. Here are the things I've learned. Here are some strategies I'd like to try in the business. Here's a seminar I'd like to give. Here's a book I'd like to write. And, and you know, the team gets on it and gets it done. So you don't necessarily need to be the doer if you're that kind of person. If you are the doer and, you know, you, you're not really into the learning, there are people who are like that as well, find somebody who's doing the learning and have them, uh, you know, guide you and direct you. You know, a lot of time that's a coach, right? Uh, that's what we do. Coaches are the kinds of people we just go and grab as much as we can we're, or we're hungry for knowledge all the time. And then we just feed you the pieces that you need so you don't have to read the whole book. You get the two paragraphs in the book that are relevant to you at that time. They tell you exactly what to do or what you can do and you take it from there. So you can make this work if you're not the kind of person who loves learning and doing. If you're on one side or the other, there are ways to, to make that happen. Okay, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsor today, the Marketing Network, marketingnetwork.tv. Some of the brightest minds come into the studio here, and we have an opportunity to sit down, chat with them, have them share some of their best secrets. People like Warren Whitlock and uh, Tiana Conte and Jeanette Joy Fisher, Sylvika Raska. Oh, boy, Sylvika did a great job uh, talking about, uh, you know, how to get started in live streaming video because that's a big question a lot of people have these days so she came in the studio did a really nice job with that um really the marketing network is about becoming a better more successful business owner and that's really what we put together we put together programs and training online training uh that you can watch from anywhere which is always a lot of fun make it easy for you to learn uh you know you get unlimited streaming when you subscribe so it's just 9.95 a month and like i said if you use offer code coach at checkout, you will save 25% on that. And, uh, you know, it's full video, full 1080p H, uh, HD video, so you can watch it on your, you know, 80-inch LED sc LCD screen if you've got that, or you can watch it on your uh, iPhone, your Android phone. Uh, you can watch it on a tablet, your computer, however you want to. Um, we have a lot of different uh, opportunities here for you to, to watch this uh, from, you know, any device you want to, and that's really the, the joy of it is to have it. So save 25% on your on your subscription, as I said to you, just go to uh, themarketingnetwork.tv. And when you subscribe, use offer code COACH at checkout, and they'll take 25% off your membership. And I hope you'll do that this week because we have some new stuff coming. we got more people coming in the studio, and uh, we're going to be putting more content on there that you are really going to enjoy. Okay, thank you for uh, your attention during that little uh, promotion. That's how we are able to continue to bring this to you. Now, I want to get into viewer mail because uh, some people send me email. If you want to send me an email, very simple. Just write to me at robert at ultimatewealth.com. I've had the same email address now since 1999. Uh, so send me an email and then put in the subject line question so I'll know that it's a question. And I will answer them either here live or 
I will answer them directly in email and write right right back to you. So uh, you know, any question about marketing, anything about building your business, anything about personal development, uh, we can go in any direction. We can even go in health if you want to talk about health. We can do that too. Got a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge base in that area. But I tend to focus on on what it takes to become a successful business owner, what it takes to market, what it takes to promote, and that includes mindset, that includes personal development, and also physical health. Because if you don't have your physical health, it's really difficult to stay focused and stay on top of it. I had to work hard on mine this morning because I woke up and I just was not feeling great. Um, but I worked on it, got myself up, and now I'm feeling great again. So, you know, sometimes your body needs a little bit more attention. Uh, you got to be able to do that. Okay, this week's message comes from... Uh, Teresa in Watertown, New York. Watertown, New York. Wow, that's really upstate New York. Should I be using my personal page for my business on Facebook? Oh, Teresa, what a great question that is. Should you be using your personal page? Uh, the answer is no. You might say, well, why not? Right? I've got could because you're capped at five thousand friends, and that's it. When you hit five thousand, you can't add any more. Now, do you really have five thousand friends? No, you don't. So your personal page is your personal page. It's very easy to set up a fan page, and that's what I would do for your business. Set up a fan page, and I would also set up a group. We'll talk about groups one day. We're going to have a, a, a podcast episode just on Facebook groups. But go ahead and set up a fan page and use that for your business. Look, my family doesn't want to hear about my business stuff, right? My friends don't want to hear about it. They're my friends. They're in a different circle, if you will, than the people that I do business with. There is some crossover, but not a lot. Not enough to make it worthwhile. So I have a business page, which is Coach's Corner. That's what I use for my business. And I use my personal page for people I've either met at seminars or know personally or, or run into. People give me their business cards all the time. And, you know, I, I invite them to join me on Facebook and we're friends and we connect and that kind of thing. But it isn't really a place where I start selling my seminars and coaching programs and stuff. It's the wrong place to do that. You don't want to be bombarding your friends with that. You want to bombard people who are potential clients or actual clients with that kind of information because the reason that they're in your network is because they want to hear that thing about that. They want to hear about your business, what you've got, what specials you've got going on, what's new, what are you doing, what are your plans, right? So I would not use your personal page for business. I would use a fan page for your business. Very easy. doesn't cost anything to set up. And just put the energy and focus on building out the fan page. I think that's really a better uh, use of Facebook. You know, you guys got um, Facebook questions. You can certainly send them my way. I would love to hear them because it's a great topic. Robert at ultimatewealth.com. That is the email address that you'd want to use. Uh, send me your questions. And uh, we'll do a lot more on Facebook because I've been uh, my heels have been dug in deep on Facebook over the past two years. Uh, I've been doing a lot of of advertising for clients and uh, doing some of my own testing as well and learning a lot of lot of backdoor kind of strategies that I don't share with everyone, right? Some things I only share with my clients because, you know, they're high dollar kind of clients and you want to make sure you're giving them something different than um, you would give to the general public. But there's a lot of stuff that I can share with you that would be eye-opening because a lot of people just don't know about it uh, and they can go into Facebook blind and that's really the wrong way to go into this. Now, you might not be a Facebook fan, I understand. I'm not a huge Facebook fan. However, I realize that if I want my clients, that's where my clients are. So I've got to go where my clients are and that gets me into uh, using Facebook. So send me an email, robert at ultimatewealth.com um, with your question and I will either answer it, uh, like I said, either in the email itself or um, I will answer it on a future edition of this podcast. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for being here. I do appreciate it. And uh, like I said, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and make sure you tell your friends too. Give us a like. I'd love to hear, uh, like to get those likes. They make me feel good. They encourage me to keep going and uh, I wish you a great week and we'll look forward to doing this again next week. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Have a great week.